Here we are in Kentucky, home of the Kentucky Derby, bourbon, and hopefully some mushrooms. Eric Osborne normally leads psilocybin retreats in Jamaica where you can do psilocybin mushrooms legally. You're welcome for that knowledge. And today, he's going to be showing us how to identify, harvest, and pick wild mushrooms. Where are we right now? Uh, just a random park in the city. Yeah, there's like children's birthday parties and people walking their dogs. How'd you get into doing this? Uh, somebody gave me a bag of mushrooms when I was 20, and that changed my life forever. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I started picking wild mushrooms for food. Uh, it was after I had psychoactive mushrooms. Uh, I, I kind of fell in love with psilocybin uh, immediately. Like, when I first had that first like swoosh of shadows, oh, oh this is this is what I want. Um, and then that just like led to a general intrigue about fungus, uh, watching animals eat mushrooms in the wild and just got curious of how many edibles there were out there. Uh, and then learned that I could clone and grow my own mushrooms. It satisfied the, the nerd part of myself. If we're looking for psychoactives, then we're not going to be looking in dung. We're going to be looking in mulch. The vast majority of the psychoactive mushrooms grow in wood debris. Uh, there are a few species that do grow in dung, but not, not majorly. What I thought I liked about them was that they taste like shit. Now I feel like they're just tasting like wood chips. Uh, well, these, these taste different than your cubensis, right? Cubensis, the one that most people are familiar with, are definitely a dung-dwelling mushroom. That's where they originated. They don't have to grow in dung. You can grow them in like straw or paper or all kinds of stuff. But, <laughs> but you get to. But you can. And you indeed, certainly yes. can grow them. Yes. Uh, people are very reluctant to pick mushrooms because there are obviously some very toxic species out there. The psychoactive mushrooms that we're looking for today were only identified in 2003. So it's relatively new, uh, even to regular pickers. I've been looking for psilocybin for like 15 years in the wild, and only last year did I finally find it. They kind of run in the veins along the mycelium, so here's some real young ones there. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. We are quite literally three feet from the road, and there's families and stuff just driving right by the truth and uh if only if only they knew um just what i'm looking at here is looks like maybe a few hundred dollars worth of mushrooms that i've seen just sitting in this one place there's definitely a few hundred trips right here where we're sitting if you were to eat this 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 and this you're gonna be solid for several hours so how long does it take for one of these little babies to turn into one of these big fellas uh, about three to five days. So how often do you come here? About every three to five days. <laughs> <laughs> Just every single time there's mushrooms to be picked, you will be here. Uh, yeah, I make my rounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this mulch. What's uh, what's it doing here in the first place? Uh, yeah, so the mulch is courtesy of the city park system. It's uh, interesting to note that the municipal parks are the uh, largest cultivator of psilocybin mushrooms Probably, definitely in this city and probably nationwide. was always telling me that I should go and play outside when I was younger and I would have been more inclined to do that had I known that this is going to be the case. This is better than picking apples, that's for sure. This is actually, this is one of the best first dates that I've been on in, <laughs> in some time. <laughs> How many trips am I holding in my hand right now? Seven, seven. five to seven, uh -huh. maybe more depending on 
Depending on how, uh, yeah. how strong you like your trip. Yeah, it's, it's two Shane trips worth. So what's the next step? Find a safe place to eat them. The first lesson about set and setting, do not do it in an inappropriate setting, you know? I mean, if you're out there with saber-toothed tigers, stay off the stuff. Or, you know, if you're on the freeway at 80 miles an hour, this is probably not the place you want to do it. I mean, there's no overestimating the stupidity of people, and that they're very ingenious at finding inappropriate settings. But the point is, why? It diminishes its value, and it may be dangerous. That's, you know... <laughs> 90, 95% of bad trip stories I hear is, is someone, oh, I did them once in college. I, I had some mushrooms, went to a kegger. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure I know where you went wrong there. <laughs> Keggers are awful. <laughs> they are an awful, awful time. Mushrooms tried to show you that. 